Hey, thanks for joining us for another uh, sermon conversation as mm. Pastor Rob spoke this week on a sermon called Complete Freedom. Complete Freedom referencing the story of the demoniac that uh, Jesus freed and the yep. demons went into the pigs. Yep. What a great story. You should go and find that story in the Bible and read it. That's yeah. a, it's a great story. Uh, but, you know, Pastor Rob, have you had any uh, demonic uh, possession type experiences yeah. like this one in the Bible? Absolutely. I feel like as a pastor too, man, I could share a lot of stories, but maybe for personal sake, I don't want to share somebody's personal story, but uh, just my story. Um, I remember in my life, so many of you know, New Year's 2000, radical salvation, transformation, you know, baptized, filled with the Spirit, and I'm just living up my life now, become a pastor, I'm a youth pastor up north, and we've brought in this guest speaker time and time again, this guy Len Olson, and he could see in the spiritual realm, which I thought mm. was pretty cool, I, you yeah. know, it's a pretty nice gift to have. Or maybe not. I don't know if you always want, yeah. want to see people and that you see <laughs> demonic uh, spirits on people. But, you know, as he was, as we were ministering together, we were praying for people to be delivered and set free. So it was just some wonderful things were happening. And I remember I was always like praying in tongues every time we were doing this because I was like, personally, I seriously, I was like, I don't want that spirit to come onto me. And yeah. Len was like, so why are you praying in tongues every time we, we pray? I said, I don't want anything to do with that. He's like, <laughs> no worries. We got, we got authority. It's not, you're not going to have to worry about it. And then I leaned over at him, I just looked at him and said, Len, do I have a spirit? And he says, yeah, you do. And I was like, oh man, this isn't good. So I was like, we gotta deal with this. And I remember him just kind of calling out, it was very simple, it was just really relaxed. We had just dealt with some situation, just like this. He's like, okay, so reveal yourself. And all of a sudden, seriously, I couldn't see Len anymore. Mm. He said that the spirit had come out of me mm. and it just, all of a sudden, he was cloudy in my mind, uh, in my vision. And he just said, you know, what are you? Mm -hmm. And I just remember this instant idea in my mind. I was reminded of what my mom said to me eons ago, in a sense. She said, just so you know, we've had some family history of satanic worship at some point mm -hmm. in our family tree. And uh, I just want you to you know, be aware of that. And mm -hmm. I just remember it just was bang, was right in my mind. And I just thought, man, that's probably like a generational curse in my life. So I was just living life, you know, mm -hmm. following Jesus. But there was this thing that was there. And it just called me out on it. He just dealt with it. And I just remember I just felt so much freedom again. Like, you know, when I was saved, there was this freedom. Yeah. And when that happened, you know, I, it, nothing changed physically or yeah. in the flesh, but something changed spiritually. And mm -hmm. I was just like, there was this new Pastor Rob yeah. kind of with some new authority or yeah. a little bit freer than before. So that was just oh, that's great. A, a great moment in my life. So Yeah, that's great. You know, you know what always intrigues me is when I read this story and you touched on it in your sermon or now about this guy when he's casting out demons or this this thing that came out of you mm -hmm. you know where do they go yeah. <laughs> after yeah, this absolutely. you're like where they can't come back to you right away yeah. you know yeah. or or whatever it is where do they go yeah. and uh, i remember as I was reading, you know, in the scriptures, it says in Luke 11, starting in verse 24, it says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. Mm -hmm. And not finding any, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it swept and put in order. Then it goes and takes along seven other spirits more evil than mm -hmm. itself. And they go in and live there. And the last state of the man becomes worse than the first. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that verse there has always intrigued me. It's like, you know, it, it left, it was swept and put in order, and yet that, that spirit came back. And mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. one night, I think probably about three, four years ago now, I was putting my kids to bed, praying over them, and just waiting until they fell asleep, standing there kind of waiting in their yeah, room. Yeah. And uh, I was just meditating on this verse saying, you know, what, what does this mean, these mm -hmm. seven mm -hmm. other spirits that come with it? Mm -hmm. And uh, God spoke really clearly to me in that moment. He said, the seven-fold spirit, uh, the demonic spirit, is mm -hmm. the religious spirit that comes when you've swept your own life, yep. when you've you know, taken the scriptures and said, well, I can do it on my own. I can follow this moral thing or, right. or another religion. It doesn't yep. matter. Whenever you come to your relationship with God and wanting to clean yourself and doing mm -hmm. the 12-step program or whatever <laughs> it is, you're trying to put everything in your life in order, but you yep. haven't actually come to God to... to to, f to fill your life with That's his right. spirit. So good. And, uh, and as a result, this sevenfold spirit is able to overcome that order mm -hmm. and, and possess you with this religious attitude. And I remember, you know, in Canada, sometimes it's difficult to see that because we don't have a religion 
per se. Right. But if you go to another country that is very religious, and mm -hmm. I saw this when we lived in Israel, is that uh, a lot of the teachers there would would basically have their congregation congregants mm -hmm. filled with this religious spirit because yeah. it was just total condemnation. You know, yeah. you're not living right. You got to do this in this area, and it just sets up these fences around fences around fences around your life until yeah. you feel condemned, unless you're just walking this tightrope little path. Yeah. And even yeah. then, you, you're not perfect. Yeah. You're never yeah. gonna succeed. Yeah. And so, you know, we can read that and we can almost be a little afraid, you know, oh no, is there yeah. the sevenfold spirit <laughs> going to come and attack yeah. me? And so I want to, you know, throw this question out to you. Yeah. Can a Christian be possessed? Yeah. I like the idea too of like, maybe I'll just hang on to the one because I don't want the seven, yeah, right? Exactly. This one isn't doing much damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I think about it in the, in the realm of uh, the Apostle Paul. So, and I think sometimes we really take that, those scriptures out of context when we, mm. when we say like, this is my thorn in my flesh. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, it actually, what you're saying is, is actually true because it is a thorn in your flesh, mm -hmm. right? It's a fleshly thing. Mm -hmm. But I think if we were to operate in the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. that we would be free from that. So when the Apostle Paul says, I'm actually praying that God would take this away from me. So we, we see the context of the Apostle Paul. I can never see the Apostle Paul walking around like, oh, a thorn in my flesh, like a baby. Yeah. Yeah. He's serious about it. He's like praying. He's like, God, take this away. Please take this away. And God mm -hmm. would always say, I have given you enough to mm -hmm. you know, be able to handle this, right? Mm -hmm. So if we just give up, though, if we just say, well, pff, just, this is as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. I'm never really going to be free of all this stuff. That is taking scripture out of context, mm -hmm. and it's really only operating, you know, on ice level in a sense, on fleshly level. Because mm -hmm. we have the authority, we have the ability to cast things out, we have the ability to remove things in our mm -hmm. lives. And when we operate as Jesus operated, that's our focus, right? We, we, we give up time, we have these conversations because we believe that there's something better. We don't just talk mm -hmm. about this like, well, that was fun to talk about, you know, yeah. good luck out there. Yeah. Like, no, we're serious. Like, yeah, you sure. can be free from these things. Yeah. And so can a Christian have a demonic spirit? Absolutely. Mm. They can, I mean, I did. i crystal clear, right? Mm. You know, mm. I didn't even know that it was there. Mm. And I think we can have things in our area and we don't think about things like, oh, we've, we, we can't even operate in society because mm. we're, we're so, you know, addicted or so bad. But we can just operate in society and look, you know, we look okay, but internally we're actually not okay. There, yeah. there is some spiritual things going on in our lives. And not that, that we're demonic, that we run to graveyards right. to live, but that we can just operate in the world. But ultimately, I think lots of times we're stumbling around because yeah. the enemy is working in our lives in the mm. spiritual realm and we don't even notice it sometimes. Yeah. So we've got to yeah. flick that switch in a sense yeah. and, and get spiritual mm. about... Uh, the things that are going on in our lives and start operating in the flesh. So yeah. often we just give up in the flesh. Yeah, it's good. You know, I'm reminded of uh, in the book of Ezekiel, God takes him up in the spirit and he shows him the temple. He mm -hmm. shows him the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And everything on the outside looked like the temple worship, temple sacrifice was going well. Yeah. But then he shows him the rooms inside. Mm -hmm. And he says, look at the secret sins that are happening here. Yeah, yeah. And that is such a powerful thing because sometimes there's sins that we've just, you know, in our generational past mm -hmm. that we've just ignored, that mm -hmm. we haven't even thought about. Mm -hmm. you know? And then God wants to actually deliver us from those things mm -hmm. because there's still strongholds, there's still points where the enemy can press yep. and cause us to to just not be completely free. And God yep. wants us to live completely free. Yep. And so we have to remove those things. In the name of Jesus, we have Absolutely. to get those things Absolutely. out of our life yep. so that we can be internally clean and, and walk in the authority that he's given us mm -hmm. uh, fully to walk in. You know, I, I want to really contrast this idea of generational sins versus the thorn in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. Just like Job, you know, Job was a righteous man walking in mm -hmm. the ways of God. Yep. And he didn't have the generational sins, but God tested him. Mm -hmm. And that is the same sort of idea as a thorn in the flesh, that this is not something that he was just carrying on to. And that's, that's what right. his friends were saying, that's right? right? Yeah. He's like, no, man, I'm, I'm good. That's right. you know, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a yeah. mediator. Right. I wish I had somebody to defend Look at me. my backyard. It's all clean. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but, you know, those times it's, it's so clear mm -hmm. when God says this is a test or a thorn yeah. in the flesh. Yeah. It's not something that we're just, it strikes us, we're unaware and yeah. we actually have to push in and make sure that this is from God versus this is right. something that's in our past that we can get free from. Yeah. If we don't, we'll continue to live in this place of battle where we think that the flesh has some sort of stronghold in our life, that there's sure. a wrestling match between the spirit and the flesh. Mm -hmm. It's interesting is last night, yeah. you know, I took a, a, 
uh, Advil before bed because I had some you know, muscle pain and whatnot. And so I woke up in the middle of the night probably to help a child. I don't even know what was yeah. going on. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, as I, in my drowsy state, I just remember this really strong thought from mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said that if you still think you're in a battle, then the enemy's already won. Yeah. I don't know why the, the, the God yeah, yeah. wanted to share that yeah. at that moment. I was like, that's really good, God. Yeah. I got to remember that one. <laughs> and then I passed out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, thinking about that today that's makes right. a whole lot of sense that Absolutely. God would share that thought just for this moment. If yeah. you think you're still in the battle, then the enemy's already won. We need to live from that yeah. place of victory. Yeah. And, you know, something I want to give to you is uh, Romans 8 here. Uh, that it just makes it so clear in Romans 8 verses 12 and 13 here that we're not in a battle, that, that we have stepped into a place of victory as more than a conqueror. Yeah. He says, so then, Paul is saying, so then, beloved ones, the flesh has no claims on us at all, and we have no further obligation to live in obedience to it. For when you live controlled by the flesh, you are about to die. But if the life of the Spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, we then taste his abundant life. Mm -hmm. you know, that is it. You're supposed to live an abundant life. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I would encourage you as a tool to take away from all of this is, is to, to meditate on Romans 6, 7, and 8. Mm -hmm. It's that whole journey of, of God taking us out of the flesh and, and us coming into this place of saying, well, then do we need to wrestle with it? And Paul says, no, we have yeah. Jesus Christ. He's conquered it all. We can live in complete freedom and victory yeah. in every yeah. area of our life. And that's Romans 8. Mm -hmm. And just, it's this, it's this great set of chapters that you know, we should mm -hmm. meditate on daily just to yeah. live in that complete freedom. Yeah. yeah. I like as you're saying that as about trying to be free, we see in the story so clearly here that these individuals were chained up and held down and mm -hmm. they at least had the strength to be able to break the chains off. Mm. But really, where did Jesus find them? Still broken, still mm -hmm. demon possessed. They had the strength to like, in a sense, they think in the fleshly, I could break these chains off fleshly. Mm. But spiritually, they were not free. They were still chained up in all their bondage and all their sin. So the enemy kind of often plays this card on us where we think, hey, I'm actually free of that. Yeah. But you're not when you keep stumbling. Like how many times have we seen people like, hey, they're doing well and all of a sudden they fall. Yeah. And time and time again, because you're operating again in the flesh. Because in the spirit, there's no change. You're yeah. free. Exactly. You have the victory, you have the authority, you can have all those things. Mm. But if we live in the fleshly realm, oh my word, we are going to struggle and continue to fail. Mm -hmm. And that's why I agree with you on your scriptures, just reading, meditating on the word of God allows us to be filled up spiritually so that we can function in the spirit every day. Yeah. If right. you and I are going to function in the flesh, like, you no, know, I feel like, okay, I'm working out now, like I'm lifting weights. Yeah. My arms are actually really sore today. <laughs> so yes, physically, I, I'll be able to do certain things, lift certain things up that I couldn't before, but I'm never going to be able to lift anything off of my life or be able to speak in other people's life mm -hmm. if I'm not functioning in the spirit. It'll only be, you know, paper thin in a sense. Yeah. It's not going to change somebody's life. And as you listen to this, you know, we were praying that as you listened, mm. something would be lifted off of your yeah. life. Something would change. You would be freed in Jesus name yeah. because that's how we function. Yeah. Because we believe what we're talking about, that something will change. Yeah. We don't just think like, hey, this is a great idea. We should write a book about it. Yeah. <laughs> we actually believe that you can live this way. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, this is the powerful life-changing gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, one, one question here that I, I want to answer before we go is, yeah. uh, we see that Jesus, you know, sent the demons into the pigs and the pigs ran off the cliff. Totally. And yeah, yeah. the result was that there was some farmers or shepherds or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call mm -hmm. them. I don't know if they're pig herders. Yeah, I, don't I don't know, know yeah. what you call them. <laughs> um, their, their livelihood was destroyed. Absolutely. You know, why, why here do we see Jesus, God yeah. in flesh, yeah. destroying somebody's livelihood? Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts around that? Yeah, so we had some fun earlier with yeah. that thought about uh, the idea that, you know, we, we feel pretty comfortable with the idea that there was, you know, Jews living in that area mm -hmm. and that possibly some Gentiles were, were herding these, this, these pigs. Mm -hmm. And the idea to me in my mind right away is that they're too close to sin, mm -hmm. right? For Jews to be around unclean animals is not right. good. Right. So for them to even just be around that area, so often in our lives too, we're like, well, I'm doing pretty good, and there's, but there's a couple areas of my life that are, I'm walking a tight line. I'm in that gray area. Yeah. Well, we need to be so free of that kind of mm -hmm. thinking. We need to be so far away from it. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't allow those kind of things into our lives because as we do that, mm -hmm. when we're challenged with if we lose some materials or if we, 
you know, in that area that we're a little bit gray, all of a sudden something happens, we're, we're turning us so far away from God. Mm -hmm. We just need to be so free and so far from those kind of things. Yeah. So. That's good. I, it reminds me of when I worked for a few Christian business owners. Mm -hmm. You know, they would charge out their time at 80 bucks an hour for what they're doing. And then they would charge out, you know, my time for 40, 50 bucks an hour. But then at the end of the day, I'd only get paid around 15 bucks an yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah. And in their minds, you know, that was okay because they thought, you know, I'm making some money. That's right. And that's okay. He doesn't know about it. That's right. You know, yeah. All that kind of stuff. And, yeah. you know, he does great work, so he's making me lots of money. That's right. But it's such a gray area where we think that we need that money. We need that extra yeah. money from people in order because we're the business owner. We're the best. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, I don't know, unfair wages. I mean, there's lots in the Bible to talk about yeah. that. Yeah. But it's so easy for us to have these little pockets of gray areas. And if nobody ever challenges us on it, yeah. then we're going to just go out our lives thinking that's fine. Yeah. But these are, again, gray areas where God wants us to be clean. He wants Absolutely. us not to have any, you know, hold on our life. He doesn't want money to have a hold on our life. He doesn't want anxiety to have a hold on our life. Yeah. And never mind just the big sins that we think about, you know, drugs and homosexuality and all yeah. these things. Yeah. This is, you know, the little things, the little areas of our life right. where we're, you know, the way that we talk to our spouse, the way that we talk to our kids, all of mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be free and clean to come, uh, you know, in everything to have this attitude of grace mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, to speak with truth, all yeah. of these things. So yeah, yeah. these are great. You know, mm -hmm. I want to finish with this story because yeah. of the pigs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we see, you know, this is a, a, a Jewish Gentile area where there was some mixing, kind of like the Samaritan type of area. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Jews, you know, they, they themselves probably wouldn't have had the pigs, but these, you know, Gentiles may have worked for them. And so mm -hmm. they're making money off of Mm -hmm. the the pigs that are being sold and yeah. eaten by yeah. the gentiles and uh, it reminds me of when i was in israel uh, it was a uh, shabbat so it was a saturday sabbath and uh the the jewish people on that day they all rest they mm -hmm. can't do any work if they're That's orthodox right. they can do zero nothing work they That's can't right. turn on a light switch so mm -hmm. they leave all their lights on yeah. so that <laughs> so they don't have to touch the light switch yeah. and um, it was a power you know power surge in the midst of this storm all the lights and electricity went out for a little while and then it came back on and so i was outside and uh I see this Orthodox Jewish man coming to, to greet me and saying, hey, how are you? What are you doing here? Finds out that I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, well, you know, us uh, Orthodox Jews, it's on a Shabbat, you know, we can't uh, turn off and on the light switch. And if the power goes out, we can't turn it back on. But if we meet a really nice Gentile man yeah. <laughs> that, who, who can do it for us, <laughs> then, we can, uh, then we can have some power again. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, you know, I got the hint and I said, yeah. sure, I don't mind to help you out at all. Yeah. And yeah. turned his power back on for him mm -hmm. and was able to you know, have some good food as, as a return yeah. <laughs> for the favor. But it's that kind of idea. You know, I can't break the law myself. I can't touch the mm -hmm. unclean thing. Yeah. But if somebody else does it, then it's permissible. It's That's okay. Right. And so the attitude is the same here. Yeah. It's just a good picture, a good story that kind of yeah. relates with this whole image that's going on. But, mm -hmm. you know, what I love more than anything in this story is that the guy whose livelihood was destroyed yeah. has this amazing opportunity now to, to say, okay, I've seen the power of God in front of me to set somebody free. I've seen the power of the enemy go into pigs and destroy mm -hmm. my whole livelihood. Mm -hmm. And now I have a choice. I have to make a choice. Am sure. I going to trust in the power of God? Am I going to go and follow this Jesus? Or am I going to try and put back my life together? Am I going to yeah. try and, you know, set myself free again, you mm -hmm. know, financially free or whatever he was yeah. thinking. And he makes a choice to, to go his own way, know. you know, to pick up the pieces of his life on his own. Yeah. He, he had this amazing clean slate given to him. Yeah. He doesn't have a livelihood to go back That's to. Right, yeah. He could just follow Jesus, yeah. but he doesn't. Yeah. And uh, I think that, you know, when we present the gospel, we need to present the whole gospel. Mm -hmm. And and the part of that gospel is the reality of destruction and hell and what, what's coming for those who, yeah. who follow in the way of the enemy. And yet the truth is, is that many people in this world may love the gracious, loving, kind Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when he presents hell, that people are going to run. Mm -hmm. And they're going to run back to whatever they want to do. And that's the full gospel that Jesus yeah. is presenting yeah. here. And yet freedom is the opportunity. And so for those who want freedom, they'll choose freedom. For mm -hmm. those who want you know, bondage in hell, and then that's what they've chosen. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They send Jesus away, right? Leave us yeah. alone, right? Yeah. We're going to go back to that lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So I encourage you guys uh, to, to <clears throat> preach this message of freedom, mm -hmm. but to preach the full gospel. And uh, we bless you with this word and pray that you would live in complete 
freedom as mm -hmm. you go throughout this week, as you go through the rest of your life, that you would renew your mind and again, go back to these scriptures in Romans 6, 7, and 8 mm -hmm. to live in that renewed mind. Thanks for joining us and have a wonderful week. God bless.